As I entered the room, I was greeted by the sound of a woman's voice engaged in conversation. Her tone was filled with warmth and endearment, uttering phrases like you are so adorable. Yes, you are. You are. You are so sweet that you make sugar seem sour. Don't you? Don't you? Her voice had taken on a higher pitch, and her words followed a melodious sing-song rhythm. Even before I turned to look at her, it was evident that her words were directed at either a baby or a dog. As I glanced in her direction, my observation was confirmed, she held a cream-colored Pomeranian, the recipient of her affectionate words. The natural inclination to alter one's speech patterns when addressing infants, puppies, or dogs is so instinctive that she likely wasn't even aware of the shift. Interactions with dogs and babies prompt shifts in our language. Our communication adapts to various contexts, employing formal language when addressing audiences or authorities, and a more relaxed tone when conversing with friends and family. When communicating with babies and young children, a distinctive style emerges, higher-pitched, almost melodic, with frequent fluctuations and repetitions. This form of communication is technically termed infant-directed speech, often referred to as motheries due to its common use by mothers when addressing their offspring. Notably, individuals who aren't mothers also adopt similar tones when interacting with very young children. In the 1980s, psychologists Kathy Hirsch-Pasek and Rebecca Trayman unveiled that the language used when addressing dogs is remarkably akin to motheries. While dog-directed speech is the precise term, they coined it playfully as doggerel. Subsequent research has revealed that both children and dogs exhibit heightened attention when exposed to motheries or doggerel. Recent studies suggest that children's brains respond more intensely to motheries, prompting the question of whether dogs' brains similarly react to our speech patterns. Anna Gurgli and a team at Yevush Laurent University in Budapest delved into this question using fMRI to study the brain activity of 19 family dogs. They observed the dogs' responses to speech directed at dogs, infants, and adults. Speech samples came from unfamiliar male and female speakers engaging in positive interactions with their own babies, dogs, or adults. Results indicated that specific regions in the left side of the dog's brain, located slightly forward of the typical auditory response regions, were distinct. These areas exhibited greater responsiveness to dog and infant directed speech than to standard adult directed speech. This neuroscientific evidence suggests that dogs' brains, akin to those of human children, are attuned to the special speech patterns used for them. Of interest, the dog brain regions were most responsive to female voices, particularly when employing doggerel or motheries. This observation may elucidate the prevalence of women in dog training roles. Within companion dog training, women overwhelmingly dominate. This contrasts with fields involving field or protection dogs, which often have male trainers. This gender trend in dog training could be attributed not solely to women being kinder or more perceptive instructors, but also to the fact that dogs' brains are more sensitive to the female voice, especially when using dog-directed speech. The neural alignment between female voices and dogs' heightened response underscores the deep and unique connection between humans and their furry companions.